It has become official just moments ago. The Nets and the Kyrie era is over. Kyrie headed to Dallas. We're going to take a look at the statement right now from Sean Marks. Now that the trade is official, the Nets acquiring Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and draft compensation for Irving. We're excited to add Spencer and Dorian to our roster while also securing draft compensation that will increase our flexibility moving forward. Spencer is a dynamic, multi-talented guard who we are very familiar with from his previous stint in Brooklyn. Marks continues, Dorian is an experienced wing who brings perimeter shooting and defensive versatility to our group. Together, the two players will fit seamlessly with our roster and provide the team with proven veteran talent. Now, Frank, there is so much to get into, yeah. so many layers to this, and we certainly are going to dive into the impact of those two players and what they might bring to Brooklyn. Also interesting that there was no part of the statement that thanked Kyrie for his time, nor should there have been, but sometimes there is in yeah. these circumstances. But let's start with Kyrie. Kyrie Irving, Frank, because this has obviously been a tumultuous era. It is officially over. Just your thoughts on it yeah. finally coming to an and end. It's, and it's really been an incredible, I think it's about 76 hours. The news came down around 2 o'clock on Friday. Then, of course, they played the next night. You know, we sat here on Saturday, and you were doing the game. And you really thought from everything that you had heard, and doing some research yourself that, you know what, he probably was had played his last game for the Brooklyn Nets. And, of course, the, the trade becomes final today. It went down yesterday. And I think for the Brooklyn Nets, so many things had happened over the course of Kyrie's tenure here. And, Ryan, you know how it works. Kyrie Irving has been great the last two months. Yeah. He has played as well as any player in the league. So I get it from his standpoint, going to the team and saying, all right, I've proven I could be a great player. Pay me. And the Brooklyn Nets saying, well, hold on a second. What about the three, the three previous years? And I think the big numbers here are games played and the games missed. I think it's 156 games or seven games played, 142 missed. That's a lot. Yeah. And I think with Kyrie Irving, I think the one thing, everyone could agree on two things. Unbelievably talented. There's no question about it. But with Kyrie, there was always something. And what did that something lead to? Missing games. The reason you're getting paid, the money you're getting paid, the reason they brought you here to Brooklyn was to play and try to win a championship. For me, he just missed too many games. I think the Nets said, you know what? Enough is enough. He doesn't want to be here anymore. Let's move on. The interesting thing, too, Frank, is we've heard a lot of people say, like, well, you know, for those who would defend Kyrie in this circumstance, it's a business decision. I, I don't see how this is still a good business decision for Kyrie Irving. It felt like, and we saw he was building his value back up, right? Yes. Because the Nets got a whole lot more yep. right now than they would have got for him in the summer yep. or earlier this year when he was suspended. But it really felt like the best way for him to maximize his dollars was going to be to continue to play great basketball, to be on his best behavior. Instead, while he's playing great, while the team's winning, while they're a contender, he pulls the rug out yeah. from underneath the season. And by the way, can't even get the contract that he supposedly wanted with that's, the Nets. He legitimately, logistically, cannot get it. He could sign a yeah. two-year extension, that's it. And it looks like Dallas is going to wait till the offseason anyway. So that's what I'm confused about, Frank. Wouldn't everything that's transpired here make teams even more reticent I, to give Kyrie a long-term deal? I, I, I think you've nailed it. And I think if you go back to last June when he was going to opt into his contract or not sign the contract, and he understood the market, that no one was going to give him the big money after what had happened the previous season. So he opts into his contract. And I think all along, if he wasn't going to play for the Brooklyn Nets, I think he wanted to go to the Lakers. And maybe here he thought the Lakers would make a run at him, and perhaps they did. But the Brooklyn Nets have to look out for themselves. Right. And by the way, the, and I know we're going to get into this. The players that got back are going to help, and they get a first-round draft pick back. So if I'm Kyrie Irving, and I don't go to the Lakers or L.A. or maybe even Phoenix, the team that I wanted to go to, and now I'm leaving my hometown from West Orange, New Jersey. He grew up a Net fan. He's got his whole family here. Now you're going to be getting on a plane. You're going to be playing with the Dallas Mavericks, to your point, without the assurances that you're getting a long-term contract. I really think he overplayed his hand. And the other part about it is, and this was the thing that really uh, struck me, he was great the last two months. The game that he had against Utah, the 48 points. And, you know, two nights later, he goes for 38 against the Golden State Warriors and Steph Curry, the best player on the court that night. He looked happy. You, were, you saw him at games. His family was around. He's going to press conferences. His son is on his lap. It's an adorable thing. For the first time since I can remember, there was a sustained period of Kyrie Irving where all we were talking about was Kyrie Irving, the basketball player, and how well he was playing. And then what happened? Things might have been going too smoothly, and all of a sudden he wanted to be out. He's out now to a team which I don't care what anybody says. That was, this was not number one on his list by any stretch of imagination. Maybe it was on his, on his list, but further down. 
I don't think he got what he wanted, and I don't know if he's going to get what he wants in terms of a long-term contract. See, that's what's so amazing is I think, you know, he had been playing so well and the team had been playing so well that you start to think, like, okay, maybe in the yes. offseason this, this is something you should seriously think about, another extension with him, keeping him here. And then the way this goes down reminds you exactly why that would have been a massive mistake because when everything's quiet, when everything's going well, that's when yeah. Kyrie Irving strikes. Yeah. That's when something has to go wrong. And look, human beings are complicated. Kyrie Irving does a lot of incredible charitable things. He has changed so many people's lives in the best ways possible. But he also has been remarkably destructive to multiple NBA franchises, yeah. including this one. And Frank, if you look at when people talk about all oh, the mess of the last few years, his fingerprints are on yeah. every move that's gone wrong somehow was a derivative of Kyrie Irving's yeah. behavior. And if you remember, too, he and Kevin Durant only played 74 games together. And everyone knew that first year Kevin Durant was not going to be available. Kyrie only played 20 that year. And when all is said and done, it was one playoff series victory. That year, I did think they were the best team in the league. Obviously, injuries were part of it, but inju injuries are always a part of it for a lot of teams. It was a problem last year for the Milwaukee Bucks, just like it was for the Brooklyn Nets. The thing about Kyrie is, you know, there were some games this year. The game that he had against Phoenix, where he wasn't padding his stats at the end. He brought them back. They were down by a lot, and he made it a one-possession game. Then they go to Utah, and he has the unbelievable performance. There was a game last week against Philadelphia. He was getting it done on the defensive end, and he led them in a comeback. The following night, he's playing a back-to-back -back game, and it never looked like the Nets were going to have a chance to win that game. He played all but 41 seconds in the second half. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy is a different guy. I know why he's doing it. Yeah. I know he wants to get a contract. He wants to prove, hang on a second, everyone in this league is getting paid. What about me? But I think he had to take a step back, and I think the advice he needed to get was, yes, that's your point of view. You have to look at it from the Nets' point of view. What's gone on here? You just haven't played enough games. So two months has been fantastic. 12-game winning streak. They look like a championship contender. Once they get Kevin Durant back. But yeah, he, I think... Maybe feelings were hurt. He was insulted, but I don't think he was being fair when he looked at it from the net standpoint. Yeah, and and so after you know the tantalizing talent and uh, and some really great play over the last couple of months, the Kyrie Irving era in Brooklyn is officially over. Plenty more on this throughout the show as far as the Kyrie angle goes. Now.